Welcome back, everybody. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee from 107.5 WPLS. You are watching Open. Thank you so much for being a part of it all. Our last guest, our project manager for the Davy Tree Expert Company and a certified arborist and executive director of the Woodlawn Cemetery and Conservancy. He joined us to speak about an important tree restoration project that they are working on. So please welcome to the show, Herb Landman and Meg Ventrudo. Megan, it's so nice to see you again. Good How to see are you, Bob? You? Thanks for having us on your show. Good. You have some friends I with do. you. I do. I'm huh? sitting here with Herb Landman, a certified arborist of the Davy Tree Expert Company. Mm -hmm. And I hear that the, you're doing some wonderful things. You have the Davy Tree Expert Company people there with you. And uh, um, Herb is going to tell us more. Yes, Herb's going to tell us about our American chestnut restoration that we have going on here at Woodlawn Cemetery. Yes, um, last year we started to uh, grow five Native American chestnuts from seed. And we are currently working with the um, American Chestnut Foundation in association with the State University of New York College of Environmental Science and Forestry to do a restoration project to bring back the American chestnuts into uh, the uh, area. Yeah, is there something happening with the American? American chestnut tree? Uh, it, was there a bug or something that got into it and started to... Yes, yeah, exactly. And, and actually back in around the 1900, um, a, a fungal blight came in from Asia on, and on some imported uh, uh, Asian uh, ch chestnut trees, which yeah. spread to the American chestnut trees. And actually the, um, the, the fungus was first uh, found at the Bronx Zoo. And that's where the blight started. Now, at that time, American chestnuts were some of the most uh, prevalent and common trees, both in the forest and throughout urban areas back in the early 1900s. Uh, one out of every four trees was an American chestnut tree. And that yeah. blight came through and between the early 1900s and the 1950s, it virtually wiped out the entire um, a population of American chestnuts. Yeah, we still see some of them in Westchester County. There's uh, some of the chestnut trees that are still thriving and and, uh, I, um, and 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 I would say that those are 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 probably the Asian ch uh, ch uh, ch uh, chestnut trees, which 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 were brought in afterwards. The American chestnut trees, the only really remaining American chestnuts, are are in like woods areas where um, sprouts will start growing out of the stump and they'll live for a number of years, maybe you know four to 10 or 12 years, but then the fungal blight will eventually get to those sprouts and, 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 and kill yeah. them. How do we protect the trees that we're planting now? Uh, well, uh, right now I just have the native Amer Amer American chestnut trees. And what's happening at, at, at SUNY ESF is that they are developing a genetically modified um, American ch yeah. ch a chestnut tree by taking a couple of genes from a non-American species plant. I believe it's a, uh, a wheat plant and combining that in the, the seed and th those genes are blight resistant. And so they've been working on this actually since uh, 1989. So, so, so not spray, you don't have to spray it. It's within. Yes. It's growing with already. Yeah. 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 So, um, so, so SUNY ESF has been working on this project. And of course, it's, it's, it's taken over 30 years, but they finally had, they feel have found a American chestnut transgenic tree that will be able to survive well. And right now we are waiting for USDA approval, which they're expecting in 2023. So the idea is, is that once this transgenic um, American chestnut is available, I'll get one to plant at, at, at the Woodlawn Cemetery. And then hopefully that tree will cross pollinate with my native American chestnuts to, to develop a seed that is blight resistant. There you go. Now, are these, you, you see chestnuts in the store, are these edible chestnuts? Uh, I, I, again, those are most likely Asian ch uh, ch uh, chestnuts. 
and, yeah. and, and not and not American. How important is this American chestnut tree uh, to our ecosystem? Well, and, 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 and actually that's a, a great question. So between 1900 and early 1950s, they feel that they lost an estimated 4 billion trees. Cool. So it was really, it was really a, de a devastating effect throughout yeah. all, the, all the towns. Um, the American chestnut had a large range. Uh, they were grown from Maine all the way down to Georgia and then all the way out to like um, uh, Mississippi and Michigan. So it was a very prevalent tree, um, you know, th throughout the, the, the early 1900s. So it was a, de a devastating blight. Oh, Megan, how did you uh, come together with this partnership? Well, Woodlawn is a level two arboretum and we're always looking to increase the tree count that we have here. We have about 492 distinct species of trees on the Woodlawn Cemetery. And so, of course, this American Chestnut Project um, adds to our tree count, um, also adds to our urban forest and creating a beautiful green space here at Woodlawn for our lot owners, our neighbors, our school students to enjoy. And you have a certified arborist. And, and the name, the name <laughs> is Victor. <laughs> Dave. I mean, Herb, Herb Landman, the name right. just blends right into everything that's going on. That's it. Right. Yeah. So what's the next step, Herb? Where, where do we go from here? Okay, so I am growing these Native American chestnuts, and hopefully in the summer of 2023, we will get one of the transgenic chestnut trees from SUNY ESF, and along with the American Chestnut Foundation, we'll, we'll plant this on site. And um, the, my Native American chestnuts, since they've only been in the ground two years this year, they may have to grow like three or four more years before they're able to flower and, uh, and be cross-pollinated. Uh. But, but the hope is, is that they'll stay alive long enough to develop flowers. And then with this uh, transgenic American chestnut, uh, it, the American tra tra uh, uh, transgenic chestnut pollen will pollinate the female flowers on the, on the American chestnut native trees that, that have planted and hence get a, a, a nut that's viable and yeah. will be um, ho hopefully uh, 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 re resistant to the blight. That's going to be a special moment after four years, you know, you develop the flowering and then they're able to cross pollinate. That's a special moment. We should have a, a, a large gathering. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a neat. It is. Uh, it is a really neat, neat, neat project. So I'll yeah. be, I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be we're, 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 we're working away at it. Yeah. Uh, Meg, Megan, this lines up with the uh, the work that Woodlawn's uh, preservation training program and landscaping restoration program has going on. Absolutely, right? it really does, and it's such an important part of our preservation, our restoration, and our environmental education. And the fact that our young people in the landscape program will be able to see this happening, it just creates greater stewards of the environment um, when they're here on site. Thank you so much. All right. Um, I know you have probably have a website we can go and uh, you should put one of those cameras there, the slow motion camera. <laughs> Well, we want to make sure the squirrels don't eat our chestnuts, so we might need a camera for that. Oh, yeah, right? that's another thing. <laughs> well, well, and then in, in, in the deer cam, too, because we've had a deer on site here for three or four months. Yeah. So. Oh, they eat everything. They don't oh, eat know. They, do. <laughs> they certainly do. Yeah. Um, so they, do you put a fence around it or something? You, how do you yes, keep the squirrels I, and deer out? I, I, I do have each each tree, tree fence off. Yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Well, good luck with everything, and uh, we'll be watching. Fantastic. Thank you, and uh, we hope to see you out here at Woodlawn soon. Oh, we would love it. Um, yeah. Give us the website where we can go and, uh, and, and maybe follow this project. Sure thing. Our website is um, www.woodlawn.org, and also check us out on social media, and we'll have updates on our social media pages as well. And usually those posts are connected right to our website. We have a couple of tree blogs on our website, so we'll probably put up a tree blog now because there's a lot of uh, interest around the American chestnuts, so we'll add a, a blog on our chestnuts. 
and uh, come visit. They're the little trees that are protected in a safe yeah. space and uh, we're gonna watch them grow and contribute to our tree count here at Woodlawn. Herb and Meg, we thank you so much. We appreciate you. Thanks for sharing. Thank um, you very much. Thank you for having us as always. All right. That's all right. about all, unfortunately. That's about all the time we have for today's show. We want to thank our guests, you, for joining us and our viewers for tuning in and checking it all out. You can follow us, BronxNet TV, for continued coverage. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for letting us share in this space and time with you. Darren Jaime has the, the Wednesday edition of this, of Open. Always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you and what you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice and let the choice control the chooser. I'm the Dr. Bob Lee. I'll see you over 107.5 WBLS. I love you all. Peace.